Hello everyone. I've been talking about water for, and let's talk about vortexing water, taking steps to change the nature, the dynamics, and the energy of water since about 2015 or so. But I started learning about it around 2008. You know, I could say X number of years ago, but who knows when you watch this video? The point is, I didn't take it on face value or on someone telling me that the water was different or that this method was better on, on face value. It had to demonstrate it. It had, it had to be proven. The experience, the being open to it, following through, checking it out, gave me direct experience direct knowledge on the efficacy of the claim, if you will. Let's say there was a claim. Today, many people are still, this is still not widely known. It's questioned, but it's questioned by people and even doubted by people who haven't, one, done any research on their own. They are relying on the opinions of others who are relying on the opinions of others who have themselves not done the work. They've not done any investigation. When you read or hear someone say there's no evidence of something, there's no scientific evidence of something, they're basically saying they've done searches for some published information to corroborate or support a specific point of view. It doesn't mean there's no evidence. It doesn't mean no one's done it. It simply means that even if it has been, they couldn't find it. It could even be published, and they simply didn't find it. All of this takes us many, many steps away from the actual facts. The facts are that vortexing water changes it chemically and molecularly in fundamental ways, changes it electrically. It changes its surface tension. It changes its uh, infiltration ability. It changes how quickly it evaporates or not evaporates, how well it does that, how well it absorbs. All of which can be measured if someone cared enough to try. Now, we have cared enough to try, and the clips that you're going to see here, I'm going to show you some tests that we did years ago working with, I've worked with many people in this area over the years. I work with some today that I didn't work with before and vice versa. But we all shared at one point a desire to know and to demonstrate just how reliably this phenomenon is. So in this particular situation on the drops, in fact, I'll start just rolling uh, you'll see as I'm talking. In this situation, we used simply gravity. We didn't use a high-powered, high pressure to change the water. We used a handheld device where we took the base water, uh, or yeah, our, our base bulk water, and took one part, put it in a container, Now the one on my left is the structured water. I'm still trying to get the one on my right to come out. I'm tapping it and it's not structured. There we go. You can see the difference in the flow rate. There we go. Now we got that one going too. I got to keep tapping. I'm not tapping the one on the left. I have to keep tapping the one on the right to get it to flow. There's definitely a difference in the flow rate so the surface tension is apparently different on the left than from the right one. I haven't touched the one on the left, I'm still tapping the one on the right. OK, 
Okay. All right, so you just simply port it through that handheld unit that's got a mineral wrap around the outside of it. And the first thing we'll test for is flow, and we'll see what happens. We're just going to turn these two bottles upside down and see what happens to the flow. They're both about the same as far as the amount of liquid okay. in them. <laughs> Just the opposite. <laughs> the <this backwards>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we go. We're catching up with the photonic now. Okay. Yeah, once we got it going, you could see the difference in rates of the drips coming out. And I'm just letting them both flow. I'm having to tap the one on the the tap water, I'm having to tap the bottle to keep it flowing, whereas the photonic is flowing without any without any uh, influence from me. Okay, well, it's obvious I haven't touched the photonic bottle and it continues to flow unimpeded the tap water side. I need to keep tapping the top to, get it, to keep it flowing. Okay, the photonic bottle side, that's just about done. And the tap water side, we're, we still got about 60% of the bottle left. And the photonic's empty. So we turn over now, you'll have a problem. Okay. <clears throat> so you can see the difference in how much Tap water is still left. There's 60% of the bottle left, whereas the photonic's empty. Pretty cool. The water into the paper, which will kind of simulate a cell hydration. And uh, well, we'll see what happens here. Okay, this is the photonic. This one's the tap water, which is kind of put right next to each other. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? 
So in a flow, in a flow situation, it's more dynamic. It's more dynamic in a static situation. Mm -hmm. It seems to not exhibit the same effects. And of course, you got to look at the absorbability of the of the medium of the uh -huh. that it's going through. Yeah. I mean, if we had fabric of it, it'd go through real fast. So we got to find a medium that that is um, a little bit more absorbable. Yeah. So we, because this might take a while. Yeah. To, yeah. Okay. There's going to be a change, but it's going to take a long time. Okay. So you're right. There's yeah. more dark. There's dark, more darkness there, so you can pull in quicker. It's just going to take long. We just one. Now the other test that would be is we, we can come back and see how long it stays wet. How long does it take to dry? Yeah, that's a good a good point. Yeah, we'll come back, we'll let it go and see what happens. What would be also interesting is if we have a PPM meter here, uh -huh. we could take some soil, we could pour it in soil and see what the changes in the PPMs yeah. are to see if it would actually increase the solubility of, of nutrients in the soil and how much it would do it by. And by that we could get a good idea of of how much we can increase the availability of nutrients for agriculture and for growth. Hmm. Yeah, it's like knowing what to look at, but you see, it's definitely a difference there. Yeah, it looks like there's a shadow inside the drop, but it's probably just the water absorbing. Hmm. Huh. And see, all this was done with just a gravity unit. Every, every week for the last six months, um, they would irrigate each area. And there was only, when we put the probes in, the, the water had not penetrated further than uh, the 12-inch mark. And this is over and over and over again. So this yeah. is six months of the maintaining the same irrigation schedule. We aren't getting between 12 and eight, or 18 inches. We aren't getting that, that deeper penetration. So um, and you know they run they run the ear, they run them in a consistent enough, for a consistent amount of time and that's yeah. you know twelve uh, they they run them for a, they run them for twenty four hours irrigation so it's set up that way with a specific size on the, the irrigation uh, irrigation line each one of the heads puts out a specific number of gallons per hour and um, they, they want to keep it uniform <clears throat> so with that same amount of water once we put the structured water in we actually found that the water would penetrate all of a sudden started penetrating down to the 18 inch mark uh -huh. yeah. and that's a huge thing because it, before the water was not actually reaching the deeper root systems yeah yeah and um and now we know it's going down further and i just wish i had a longer moisture meter so i could actually determine how far each irrigation yeah. is going down but we increased uh, we know that we increased the, uh, the the water penetration to the soil by at least six inches um, which is, is significant because, you know, when you're doing irrigation, you don't want the water to stay at the top. You want right. it to go down. You want it to get into the, get into the plant. So if we can say that, show that <clears throat> the water will have an increasing absorbing, absorbing or ability to absorb into, uh -huh. uh, into paper, which is a cellulose fiber, then when we can know the uptake in the plant will be easier as well. Right. Yeah. And we know that the water will penetrate deeper. That means we know that less of it will be lost for evaporation. And uh, so that's, there's, uh, at least from the, the tests that I've done in the field with these units, they're uh, very effective for increasing the, the, um, increasing the amount of uh, water that you get into your plant with mm -hmm. irrigation. Yeah. And uh, I wish I had, I guess the next thing I need to buy is a meter for determining the uh, amount of water in the tissues of the plants. In fact, we, we could keep records of that for the places where there's water has been structured and records for the place where the water isn't, knowing that we have a consistent soil type and consistent uh, consistent type of soil or consistent soil, uh, consi consi consistency in the soil um, and consistency in the irrigation, we can know that uh, we are in fact getting more water to the plant with the same amount of water from the field. All right, well, we were... So we've determined an increase in capillary action? Yeah. Well, we had forgotten about our little drop experiment here, and uh, I thought I had botched it because I, I set water 
I set a bottle on top of it, but when I picked it up to see what had happened, since I couldn't find anything on the top, one of our theories was that uh, Joseph theorized that because of the uh, decreased surface tension, rather than the photonic water expanding out, it was going to penetrate deeper in. And lo and behold, I picked up the paper here to look at the uh, cardboard below, and it had a, and it had absorbed down into the cardboard, whereas the other side just had a tiny, tiny little drop and was spread out. If you notice here, look at this. Well, okay, well, I don't know if that matters. Um, doesn't matter but, how we yeah it doesn't it matter but okay but, but what we, we do see is that there and what Joseph had theorized before we even finished this was that because we didn't see uh, a lot of absorption from either uh, drop on the paper the theory was that it was penetrating into down down deep in rather than spreading out and sure enough I opened the paper and here on the cardboard, you see that there's there's just a tiny, tiny little drop on this side of the cardboard. On this side, we've got penetration. It's obvious. So we'll have to redo this one again just to confirm it. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So we're just want to confirm what we uh, observed on the first pass through. Oh, it's the top water. Tap water is empty. Oh, we'll use this one. Okay. Okay. So we'll take a little bit of photonic water, a little bit of tap water, and we're going to do the photonic water here, and the tap water here. And we're going to do, I'm going to do a number of these. One there, one there. We'll see how consistent this is. In there, in there, in there, in there. Okay, so we got five drops of each. We're gonna let this sit. We'll come back in 30 minutes or so and see what's going on. Great. Yeah, so it did penetrate the table, didn't it? I mean the uh, paper. Yeah. Yeah, it's obvious. Over there, just this one over here. Can you tell which one was tap water and which one the line, you know, one row was photonic, one row was tap. Um, I'm guessing that this row was tap and this was photonic. Other nope. way around? Other way around, mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you think? What do you think this means? We got, it's dry, the paper's dry, so. Well, it's wet underneath on the photonic side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yes. what's interesting, with what, what I think happened here is that this water's not stable, it, it, you know, it just, it evaporated right out. This penetrated the paper, and it's staying in, it would be as if this was in the soil, and the water's staying in the soil, it's not evaporating out. It's hanging in there, and I mean, look at that, we still have water that has any, it's still, just hanging on the top. It hasn't evaporated, but yet all the tap water is evaporated. Isn't that interesting? So would it tell you that the, that, I mean, I would extrapolate it out and say that the soil can hold the water better when it's structured. The structured water is more stable and it, it stays in its in a liquid state longer. Okay, and what about this test? Well, that's the same one. We're just following, it's, this is again, the same thing's happening here. We've got tap water on this side. This was done about half an hour later. This is tap water on this side, and look at it, it's evaporating, and, and uh, this one structured was, water. was the mm -hmm. photonic structured water. Mm -hmm. Well, that's actually pretty incredible. So, um, so the water is staying in the soil three times, or... We don't know how much longer. I mean, this is already evaporated. When we came out here to check it, I don't know, what, uh, 10 minutes ago? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's been about an hour. This was dry, and this is dry. I mean, this is still that water's still setting on top of the paper. It's not, you know. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely a difference. Well, on this side, uh, well, it's even penetrated down in now that we've moved it around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
That's like it, as you mentioned before, it's penetrated. This this would be indicative of the water penetrating deeper into the soil, and and staying in the soil, and not you know. So under drop conditions, well, I mean, just you know, extrapolating out. It would be interesting also to do a test to see how long it takes for it to evaporate, and actually measure the time differential. Yeah, yeah. That's this. You know, this is a good uh, platform. At least we can say, okay, this is something we should pursue more. Should mm -hmm. look at this more in depth and in a more controlled setting, you know, but it gives us, it's indicative that there's definitely a difference between tap water and water that is poured through just a simple structuring device, mm -hmm. glass balls and, and, and minerals. That's mm -hmm. it. Energy in motion is what it, what made the difference.